I'm aware that this is not the most Instagram friendly presentation right now, but we're going to talk about why I'm showing you exactly what I'm showing you in just a second. Hi everybody, today I'm going to be taking a look at the E. coli brush pens. These are the watercolor brush pens that you see them on a lot of lettering people, Instagram accounts. They're stunning when you see them. They are pricey and they are considered to be one of the top in the like modern calligraphy type field. So I thought I would get some and try them out. I've been intimidated by them, but then I will tell you about how I decided to not be intimidated by them. But before I do any of that, I'm showing you this. I got them on Amazon. They were a little under 60 bucks for the set of 30. There are total there. I think there's a total of 59 colors that you can get, but they or 60 colors, but they don't have a set of 60. I think the 30 is the original colors and then you have to supplement with the other ones. This is a 30 count set. This is how it came in this Amazon box. The packaging, which is plastic, was completely fucked up. I don't know if it's this, I think it might've been the seller. I have no idea. The pens are in great shape because I've been using them, but I wanted to show you the package and how like it was fucked. I don't know if I'd hang on to the package anyway. I might need to find a better way to store these, but I just wanted to give you an idea of when I opened the box and I heard it rattling around when I bought it and I was like, oh balls, this might be a problem. And this is basically what it looked like. Now, one thing I noticed is that both Amazon and this pack said it comes with 30 pens and it does not come with the blender, that there are separate 29 other colors and then a blender, but this set came with the blender. So I'm not sure what color I'm missing, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. Here is the the range. They basically look like fancier Crayolas. Like they're about that fat in terms of size. The packaging is really pretty. They do come with a color on the side, which is, as you guys know, a pet peeve of mine if pens are not labeled. They are also not for zero to three year olds. It looks like they also come with a color number, which is wonderful, especially if you want to be able to go and buy other pens or replace these specific pens. It'll be really easy to identify which ones that you want. So I've kind of arranged these into the spectrum just so I can kind of look at them. And it feels like there's a shit ton of oranges and that the purples got neglected. And just in this particular color range, like I said, there's other pens, but this is the set that you get. So I wanna take a look at them. I just figured I'd do this. I'm gonna kind of push them up because I wanna be able to swatch them in kind of an order. Not having them in a good package is making things a little bit intense. So here's a piece of folded up watercolor paper and I wanna see how they look on the watercolor paper. These are filled with the liquid watercolor. That is really gorgeous. You guys can see that the like, the color, it comes out more juicy and then it sort of ombres as the juice gets used up before you do another downstroke. And you can see the texture of the paper through the pen. I bought these 60 bucks for 30 markers and I was worried about using them and like fucking them up. And then I decided screw that. So if you watched my video a couple weeks ago about how I brainstormed to try and figure my planner system out, I decided I was gonna use these pens even though it was a lot of brainstorming. And I used them just in my sketchbook to just make lists with these pens, even though they're not nice pens, I figured why not fucking use them? And that helped like remove a little bit of the mystique. As you can see though, on regular sketchbook paper, they super bleed, which is not surprising considering that, you know, they're watercolor pens. That's, it makes sense. They're very liquidy. So I want to try blending them together just with themselves. I'm going to try a couple of different methods. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this light green and this darker green. And as you can see, when you use them and they're still wet, the colors start to blend together. Let's try that with a couple different colors. We'll use these two pinks. We'll start with the light first. I generally tend to start with the light first when I'm trying to blend because you can blend darker into light a lot easier than lighter into dark. It's hard to tell in the camera light, but that they're very similar colors to each other, but they have different tones and the blend worked really well, but I need to pick a couple colors that are, you're gonna pick up on. I can see it in person, but I don't know if the camera's picking it up. We'll go with this light blue and this dark blue. Hopefully this will be a little easier to see. I don't know if you could see while I was doing that, the way that the colors like touched each other. We'll go with a yellow and an orange. And 
And now I'm going to take this blender. a little bit of scribbling to get the yellow off of the blender, but you see how pretty that blended out? I'm going to try blending one of these out with a little bit of water. The reason I folded this was because this is a piece of like watercolor paper that had gotten kind of bent, so I figured it'd be a good scrap. I'm going to try blending the, this teal and this green together in like a word. I'm going to write high. Well, that's really neat. You can like super blend them together while they're still wet. I didn't, I wrote him because I didn't know what else to write after the eye. I'm gonna take this acrylic stamping block and I'm just gonna color a little color on it and pick it up with a different color. I'm gonna use this lighter blue. It looks like it lightly picked up the other color by putting it on acrylic block. Now I'm gonna try painting with the stuff that's on here. So it looks like you can dilute it by adding it to a stamp block or somewhere else that's porous and using a water brush so that the water is diluting the paint. You can basically play with these how you play with watercolors. So that's a lot of fun. So now that I've kind of tested out the blending and stuff, let's look at the tip. It's a nice, big, solid, porous tip. The big, with my heavy hand, the big brush stroke that you're gonna get, like the downstroke, it looks like this. You can get a nice variation. It's not super flimsy but it's also not super firm so it'll be nice for practicing with it's not it's kind of in the middle so if you feel like you don't have a lot of control with looser tips maybe practice with something that's a little bit firmer before moving to these but that it feels like just a good solid nice tip like I said they're shaped basically like Crayola markers fatter pens tend to sit better for me with my tendonitis so I'm a fan of that the other thing I want to look at before I swatch these is this gold from what I read on the website all of the colors are transparent like watercolors except for the gold and a white are both opaque so I want to see what the opaque I don't have the white in here maybe that's what I was supposed to have instead of the blender but I want to see what the opaqueness looks like well it's not gold it's deep ochre so I guess I don't have them this is not opaque but it's also a brown not a gold it looks shiny I assumed it was gold but it's not gold now I'm going to live dangerously and swatch this in my bullet journal I'm gonna be gluing pages down I already know this but in just in case they bleed through more than just the one page I'm going to protect it by sticking some paper underneath it just to you know just to make sure that shit does not go haywire so I'm gonna start by lettering I want to do a rainbow and I want to blend these together Well, that did not entirely work out the way I intended. And it's a good thing I have this other paper here because it did bleed through just a bit, but now I am going to swatch them. So obviously these are not planner friendly. You can see how these bleed through. They're planner friendly if you're willing to glue pages together. This is the most busted ass swatch page. I fucked up spacing, I fucked up spelling. I fucked up all sorts of things, but it works. I can see all the colors and that's all that matters. This is a gorgeous color selection. The lights may blow it out just a little bit, but they're like there is differences between these yellows and between these greens. 
I will say that it would have been nice to maybe have a couple of flesh tones and to reduce maybe some of the colors that are closer to each other, but that means that there'll be a lot of blending space. I feel like if you're gonna buy these pens, you may wanna go a step down from the 30 count, maybe by the 20 count or the 15 count because you might not get as many close to each other colors and they may not be as necessary, but if you're really wanting to blend similar colors together, this might be a better choice in terms of selection. Now for the fun of it, before I wrap this video up, because I feel like these are really beautiful pens and I would say that if you want to practice like brush calligraphy, things like that, these would be a good pen to go with. They are beautiful for that and the ombre effect that you get with them and the watercolor, like it's the closest to lettering with watercolors and a brush while still getting control. When you watercolor with a brush, like an actual brush and watercolors sometimes it can be a little sloppier because it's harder to get a really nice neat line unless you're super pro at it so if you want that same look but with more control this is probably what you want but they are an investment so you have to be prepared to use them now i bought this junk journal this tobias funke journal from yellow paper house and i haven't started using it yet it has a multitude of different papers in it but this first one here is watercolor paper i am going to letter something with these pens just to demonstrate that and that'll be the wrap up for this video looking at my color swatches i'm going to pick colors i want to try blending together so i'm going to be lettering something i'm going to be messing with the different colors rather than trying to make it super cohesive but these colors are all really bright and look really pretty together so i think you can use some different combinations you're not going to want to blend together like like a yellow with a purple because that'll turn into brown but you can have some colors that are like in different words next to each other I think So the first color down is super wet and then I'm gonna bring in the darker color and I'm gonna be going back and forth to kind of blend it into the other color and that kind of makes it look a little smoother If I use the blender on this last one, you can kind of see some of the different things I did here. I hope that this gives you an idea of whether or not these might be for you. I need to clean this blender off. I had a lot of fun testing them and I'm gonna use the shit out of these. You'll probably see them pop up a lot more on my Instagram, at Llama Letters. If there are other pens or art supplies you would like me to take a look at, I'll be doing a lot of brush pen reviews coming up soon, but if there's other pens you want me to look at as well, it's now is the good time, drop it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next time.